Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, M. Stuart Paintings. My name is Murray and on today's acrylic painting tutorial we are going to paint this gorgeous moonlit beach. So let's get into it. Okay, so the colours you will need for today's painting tutorial are mainly blue, black and white. You will need a little tiny bit of brown, a little tiny bit of yellow and even tinier bit of green. Please also have a hairdryer handy to dry your work at stages of this video and some baby wipes or kitchen towel just in case you make a mistake. So here we have as always a burnt sienna canvas and all I've done is use chalk to have a distance between the sea, the beach and the shore and I've drawn the uh, outline of a palm tree and the moon so if you'd like to pause the video and just jot down this brief outline for your work. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some Prussian blue and we're just going to take a large brush and we're just going to block in the background sky. Now Prussian blue is just black and blue but we want it a bit off black so we want that blue in there because when it dries as I've always told you um, acrylics dry a lot darker than they look and as I say we'll probably have to give it a second coat because We've got that burnt sienna shining through and we can see where we need to rework things. So just lather it on, just put some um, Prussian blue onto your canvas. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of white and a tiny dot of yellow and we're just going to block in around that moon. Now the moon, just like the sun, is super super bright and being that it's a full moon in this picture we're just going to block in just around that. So don't worry if you mix it all together and it looks all messy, that's fine, we're just going to block it in. So don't worry, we're just trying to get the transitions and as I say we're going to give it a second coat in a minute. But we're just going to try to block in that top part of the sky. Now I've blitzed mine with a hairdryer and now it's nice and dry look you see and just add in another coat you can clearly see where the um, new coat is just so much prominent it's so much thicker and it just makes the sky look much more realistic so look just by taking your time add in a second coat when you have to that's great just allow your work to dry or use a hairdryer for quickness and look we can just go over where we've missed and we're just going to try to make it look much more realistic by just filling in those gaps and all I'm doing I'm using the exact same color but obviously it's dry it's just so much easier now just to um, fill it in and just make it look much more like a gorgeous night sky now I'm going to make a new color now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some um, white a dot of yellow and some of that Prussian blue which is just blue and black and I'm going to make this sort of really really nice light pastel blue but it's because it's got a little dot of black in it it's quite neutral it's quite a um, pastel tone it's quite it's quite um, murky and what we're going to do seeing that it's all dry we're just going to go around our moon with our big brush down here onto the water because all it is is just reflecting the same colour onto your sea and the same, I'm drawing in a wave where that chalk line is. So all I'm doing is I'm just filling in underneath where that wave is going to be. So as I say, if you if you paint over your chalk, that's fine. You can just that's the great thing about chalk. You can just reapply it. So where my tree is, you can just go around it. And if you paint over it, don't worry. You can just put the chalk back over the top. It's no bother. So I'm just going around my moon and again same with the moon don't worry if you um, by accident cover it over who people who watched my dolphin video the other day we did the dolphins last and as I say if you if you make a mistake you can just paint over it it's no, it's no bother so you just go around it I found a really good way to um, if you find it very difficult to paint a natural circle a lot of people do just use something like a jam jar something like a jar in your household Put that on your canvas just draw around it with a piece of chalk and you will get a perfect circle so look all i'm doing is nice and dry so i'm just using this big brush and i'm just sort of blending the tones together and you can see there look where you need to work rework it there's a bit of i've missed so all i've got to do is just quickly dry it dry it with a hairdryer again and just work over the top so i've got 
this part is all nice and dry and all I've done is I've got a dry brush and a tiny bit of Prussian blue on my brush and I'm just blending those tones in together so look that's just to make the transitions look less sharp so we're just trying to make our eyes get tricked so look like normal we're just going over areas and we're just reworking them just so they're softer on your eyes so they look more natural and as I say this is these are very very quick tutorials all these tutorials I'm doing I'm speeding up the footage but even this painting it only took me about 45 minutes so normally I take a few hours for my work but it's just to show you the techniques just reworking drying them so all I've done here is I've just taken that lighter tone again and I'm just reapplying it and because it's the second coat it just looks much more natural much more pretty and it just looks much the color looks so much bolder so look just going around take your time as I say, these tutorials are very quick, but you can do this for hours. It's totally up to you how quick or how long you want to take. Now we're going to paint in the water now. So we're going to get some Prussian blue, and some white, and a dot of black. And we're just going to create this lovely sort of blue, darker tone now. And we're just going to paint below. We're going to try to reflect the tones above onto the water below. So we're going to try to do like a mirror effect. So where in the middle it's super bright, we're just going to add some white to that mix. And use that big brush and the paint's still wet. We're just going to blend these tones together. So just add some white to that mix. And just blend these tones. And it's just going to create this mirror sort of effect on the water below it so that will be the light from the moon shining down onto our beautiful ocean now i want you to get some black and just paint in these corners so we're gonna use jet black and we're just gonna block all this area in where this is going to be furthest from the light and we're going to add a little bit to that corner because that's where we're going to sign it and all we're using is black and we're just going to create a sort of triangle sort of shape in that bottom corner now if you take some Prussian blue, a little bit of white and a dot of black and we're just going to make a darker sea tone because this is obviously further away from the light source so this area is going to be a lot darker and what we're going to do we're just going to try to blend the previous tone we just had for the sea and that tone together so if you need to add a little bit more white just mix the two together there you go and we're just going to try to create a seamless transition where the light is sort of getting darker as it gets fades out now all i've done is just taken some prussian blue which again is just blue and black and i've just created this is going to be the shadow of our wave so you can add a little bit of black but don't add too much because it will overwhelm it so just blue and black together and just create the shadow of our wave now if you've missed any areas just like me just use a smaller brush and just neaten everything up so if you have to do it second coat or you've got some burnt sienna shining through just take a smaller brush and just neaten everything up and again just try to have less harsh transitions so the softer the transitions the more realistic your work will look up nature is absolutely perfect it's just absolutely perfect so trying to um, recreate nature is basically an artist's dream in life so just keep working keep working and just if you have to go over something you just dry it with a hair dryer just go over it again and it just gives the, your work just that much more flow and that much more softer look and it just looks better on the viewers eyes so just go over anywhere you've missed just neaten it up and as you see it's starting to look like a mirror effect now you can see it's just basically a mirror of the sky above where that light source is going right in that middle so i'm just filling up all the areas i've missed just giving it a bit more of a second coat now i'm going to take some of the darker tone this prussian blue and i'm going to create the illusion of waves so all i'm doing is i'm just getting some blue and black and i'm just creating a big wave here so my water is going to be quite choppy so I'm just adding the illusion of waves these are going to be shadows so again just like the big wave we did here it's just blue and black now you can take a flat brush that's a really good thing because it, as I was saying in the previous dolphin video and the um, sunset tutorial the 
beach sunset we just did. Um, flat brushes are really, really good because you can just do lines for your waves. So they're really, really easy to use. Just create straight lines for your waves. So look, flat brush, just do a straight line. Easy peasy. But watch. And you just leave gaps. So just before in the previous tutorials, we're just going to leave gaps. And we're just going to create the illusion of ripples in the water. So it's going to be the shadow tones. And the underpainting that is shining through will be the highlight tones. So look at that. Just creating the illusion of waves. Super easy. Now again, like just like I was saying to you about your sky and just like I was saying to you about everything else, you can do this for hours. You can do this photorealistic so you can just get to whatever stage you're happy. So say the tutorial is very, very quick, but if you want to, you can get a reference photo and do every ripple, every highlight. And that's how you get better and better. So I'm just blocking in, I'm just putting in the shoreline, just the sort of darkened shoreline. Just creating all the, the ripples, just the ripples in the water. That's all it is. So just keep working it till you're happy with it, till you're happy with your um, shadow tones on your water. You can do the same on the beach here, so you can just add where you want impressions of the sand, where people's feet and things create lumps and bumps on your sand. So. What I always do, if you see me getting up in the videos, because I always take a step back just to have a look at my work just from afar. So just create it till you're happy and happy with the water, with all these ripples and all these waves. Now we're going to do the froth of the waves. So this could be all the wash. And all we're going to do is take some white and some blue. And we're going to create the illusion of all the froth water hitting where these beaches are. So this is going to be sort of the impact of the water and that's going to create that foam effect and all the bubbles and bits and bobs that hits the shore. So all it is is white and blue. And we're just creating all the sort of streamer bits that are coming off these waves, just using that tone as a highlight. And again, just down here where the moon is shining onto that and onto the sort of the where the, the water hits the shore, it always fluffs up, it always creates sort of like um, an outline on the bottom. So you can use that tone, especially for sort of froth bits. So we're just going to create the illusion of the waves where the moonlight is hitting. Same tone, look, just go in there. And this is just going to create the illusion of this highlight tone just like we did the shadows hitting that waves so just do the same on the other side just create the illusion of the water rippling so these are the highlights as I say if you do do it above, do it below. So look, I'm just going to add more white to that mix. And this is going to be even brighter because it's going to be right below our, our lovely bright moon. So add some more white. You can add a little dot of yellow, not too much yellow because yellow is overpowering. I mean literally a dot and that will give it a nice sort of highlight. Just make it a bit warmer. So look, just going over the top create the illusion of that really powerful shimmer from that super bright full moon. So just create the illusion of waves, just keep working it and just have it as bright as you would like. It could be a super moon I guess, it could be one of these super moons. And we're just going to block in the moon now. So we're just going to use the exact same tone. And as I say, don't worry so much if you haven't got a perfect circle now because you can just rework it. But a really good way to do it is to just get something like a jar or something like a uh, deodorant can and just draw around it. And if you have to dry it and give it a second layer or a third layer, don't worry about that. Just keep doing it. But try to use something that is round so you can get a perfect circle.
So if you have to rework it a few times, you have to give it a couple of coats, that's not, not a problem. You can even do things like you can add a sponge and put a little bit of um, dark tone, like a little bit of blue. You can add all the sort of craters on the moon if you want to. But we're just going to do a basic moon today, so we're just going to um, fill it in with the nice white and dab of yellow and a hint of blue. I'm just getting some light blue and I'm just going around the edge just to soften it up. Again, it's all dry, so my moon's a bit wonky, so I'm just using my finger here just to sort of dry it in. And again, it's just so the transition isn't so harsh on my eyes. So look, you can even use a baby wipe. You can just sort of blend the two together. Or a big brush, like we've done previously, or even your fingers. And that gives that wispy look where the light sort of hitting the air, sort of shining down. So look, just use a big brush, just go around it. I scuffed my moon, I bent over and sort of scuffed it on my t-shirt, so I have to rework my moon. So if you if you have to, it's not a problem. But look, that looks really cool, it looks like all the air is sort of glimmering. So we're going to take some brown, some white, so a tiny bit of brown, a little bit of white, and some blue, we're going to create the sort of wet sand look and it's going to be our shimmering sand and this is going to be where the water has run over the sand and the sand is nice and wet so we're going to have this sort of lovely tone and we're just going to add a little bit more brown to it and a little bit of white and we're just going to go over and we're going to create ripples now these are all the ripples that all your feet make when you're walking through the sand so you've got all these bumps dips and bumps and crevices because when we're walking and when all the people are walking they're creating little bits and bobs so again just leave some of that underpainting out and just let your brush run out of paint as you get towards the corners because that's going to be where the light is not getting uh, it's getting darker so all I'm doing look I'm just leaving gaps to give the illusion well trodden beach Now you can take some Prussian blue and just create maybe a little bit of black as well. So just a bit of Prussian blue and black, and just sort of tie that into the shore. So just a little bit lighter than the far corners and just sort of create the bumps going down towards that sand. And that will just make the transition look a little bit smoother. So it just doesn't look so harsh. There we go, easy peasy. Look at that. Now we're going to take the shimmer, that tone that we did for the moon, so it's just white, a dab of yellow and a tiny bit of blue and we're just going to create the froth that I was talking about that hits the shore. So this is where the water sort of pulls back and it creates that sort of froth right on its edges. So just going over that and just going over our waves, we're just going to create a highlight for these tones because they've dried as I was saying to you previously. They always dry a bit too dark, acrylics, so we're just going to add some highlights over the top of it. And because we've got that lovely light blue already there, it's just going to create like the really bright hit of the moon, but it's also going to leave like a shadow bluey tone, so it just looks cool. And we're just going to take some blue and white, and we're just going to go a bit further out, because obviously that's not as getting as much light, but it's still creating a highlight. And the same on the other side, so just like a mirror effect. Just do the same for the froth that's hitting the shoreline. So you can add a little bit of white and blue together. Just look, create that lovely sort of border between the shore and the water. Just make it look much more realistic. Same here with just these froths that hit in the water. Look at that. Excellent. So I'm going to mix some brown, some white together and I'm just going to do the same on the sand so all I'm doing is just where that moonlight is hitting the sand just like the water I'm just creating the illusion of highlights on that sand just from that shimmering moonlight so all it was is a dab of brown lots of white and some blue and I'm just blocking in my ruined moon <laughs> that my t-shirt hit so as I say, if you make a mistake, I deliberately left that into the video because I want to show people that everyone makes mistakes, everyone creates a mess, 
it's, it's not a bother you can, you can fix anything so don't worry if you ever if you ever make a mess just dry it with a hairdryer and just um use some baby wipes and just paint over it so look, there we go we just paint my moon back in and again i'm just going over it just reworking it till i'm happy with it because i want that area to be super bright so it's just white and a tiny bit of yellow same on the moon because it's dried darker look you can create sort of the illusion of crevices and craters by just creating shapes on your moon you can do this super detailed as i was saying to you it's up to you So I'm just giving it a nice edge. I'm just going around it. So just create that lovely sort of edge of the bright moon. But it's totally up to you. As I say, go as detailed as you want. Or as less detailed in my case as I am doing. <laughs> just get, get to the point where you're happy with your moon. Okay, so my moon is good. I'm just gonna get some Prussian blue and black. I'm just gonna rework these waves and just gonna make them a bit more prominent. And I'm just gonna use the exact same color. So all it is is blue and black. And I'm just, with a dry brush, I'm just gonna go over this area here and in that corner where I'm gonna sign it because I'm just gonna try to make it a bit more darker. Now, all I've done is I've just got some chalk and I've just put in my palm tree again. Just taking that flat brush and some of that white and I'm just creating the illusion of ripples, highlights, just sort of the dot of the, um, the water. And I'm just going around it. So if you want to pause the video, just pause it. You can just redraw in your tree with some a um, chalk. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to use black and I'm going to paint over that chalk. So that's the great thing about chalk, you can just paint straight over it and if there is any of it um, left over, you can just dry your painting and just wipe it away. So chalk is excellent for putting things in a painting and measuring things out. So if you're unsure of where you want to go, you can just do that. Now what I'm doing here, I'm using a flat edge brush, you see there, and I'm just using that to create the lines of the palm leaves. They're so easy with a flat brush. All we do is just do lines. So look, just go, just create straight lines, just like we did with the wave, same brush. This one's just a bit bigger because I'm lazy and it just is easier to do uh, big leaves by using a big, big uh, brush. So look, you just come down and just create lines. Unfortunately, my chubby fingers in the way, but um, that's all you do. Look, just create the shapes of lines. And that brush does all the work for you. Look, just create the illusion of these these lovely um, palm leaves. Look, easy peasy. And as I say, look, if your chalk is there, we can rub that out in a minute, I'll show you. So when you're happy with your tree, just give it a dry with your hair dryer. So this is totally dry now, this painting. Look, just lick my finger and just wipe away that chalk. So that is the great thing about chalk. You can move things about. So say you were gonna add a person or you were gonna add a dog or something like that. You can draw it in in chalk and you can see where you wanna go. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take the same color as that sand, that dark sand that we did, which is just a little bit of brown, some white, and some blue and we're just going to create the knocks on that tree but we've left again we've left the shadow tone and some coconuts here and that is going to create the illusion of a 3d tree and we're just going to take some green and some prussian blue and mix that together to create a very dark green and we're just going to add some little highlights onto our palm leaves so again leave some of the, the dark color underneath we're just going to touch over it and we're just going to do it in the light because a lot of our painting is in the dark and just take some of the black and 
just create an edge. So look, I'm just creating an edge around my tree just so it's a bit more prominent. Wow, great. And I'm just gonna darken up my corners. Now, just to finish it off, I'm gonna take some tape, some painting tape, and I'm just gonna lay that across. So I've got a really straight line on my horizon. And I'm just gonna get some blue and some black. And I'm just gonna create the illusion of far away shore hitting the moonlight. It's just to make our painting look just give it a little bit more realism so it's just blue and a little bit of black and I'm just going to go over these palm leaves just over the top so they're in the foreground just remove my tape and just fill in the bottom of those palm leaves I've missed a bit here I've just taken a bit of my paint off because it wasn't dry enough if you ever put down tape just make sure your painting is dry unlike me I forgot so just use a hairdryer or just touch it up like I'm doing now and just read it. Wow, that looks fantastic now. They've got that far away sort of Fijian, Hawaiian, tropical sort of background. So just rework it till you're happy with it. And I think I'm happy with it. So I'm gonna take a photo. So let's see what it looks like all finished. So a lovely moonlit beach painting tutorial in acrylic paints. And you've painted this gorgeous painting in under half an hour. What a fantastic fee for everybody. It's a really, really easy painting to do at home. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you check out lots of my other painting tutorials. We've got sunsets, we're gonna do some animals, we're gonna do lots of other things. So thank you for painting along with me and I hope you've really enjoyed yourself. This is Murray, take care everybody. Thank you very much. Take care, bye.